definitely not VGO. Not today. Uh, today we are going to be not playing on the same run as we were before, because I'm planning on making a uh, longer form video talking about some of the uh, routes that I went with at the opening and give it use it as a explanation of the general strategy uh, that I'm looking for in South India. Uh, I was actually intending today to go with uh, Madre uh, instead of Sinhala or Coat. Uh, but I ended up going with uh, this nation instead because I already have the achievement for Madre and it's not a very long achievement. It's basically one war. If you do one successful war, you basically get that achievement. So rather than go for that, uh, I feel like Coach, which has an achievement uh, that requires sort of like world conquest style objectives makes for a better sort of like synergy. So turning this into Bharat and then going from there is I think useful. So we can do this and there is another one. The Buddhists strike back, so own all of India and convert it to Buddhism. So this is a thing that we'll be able to do, which will mean that we're gonna to need to take the religious ideas group and we'll need to probably do it reasonably early. Second idea group, potentially. <clears throat> we don't actually need to do it early necessarily, but it might be worth it to do it early. So let me take a look actually at my national ideas. I have trade efficiency, Domestic trade power, national tax, yearly prestige, merchants, diplo rep, goods produced. So a lot of like relatively weak um, stuff, honestly. Permanent criminal conda, that's good to know about. I need to look at these because they have some permanent claims in kind of weird locations. So I need to have two allies with 150 rep, or 150 opinion of me. And then I'll be able to have the ability to get acquire subjects. So do I want to try to vassalize the Maldives? Probably not, I'm probably just gonna uh, annex them. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna annex them. So. Uh, we start out as a weird sort of like little religious minority down here, and we need to do a few things. So I've already started up a little bit of the stuff. So basically I am now uh, basically getting a spy network in Cochin and Vinod to get claims on both of these, and I started improving my relations with Andra. I'm going to try to get a couple of good allies early on, um, but predominantly what I'm actually looking for is not even to uh, get allies. Predominantly what I'm looking for is to basically just be able to go in against um, all of these nations over here, sort of annex them up. Um, potentially not immediately though. It kind of depends. At the very beginning of the game, I like doing um, I, I like doing show force. Show force is very useful. Um, and the problem is that right now, I'm too big to actually uh, set anybody as a rival because I'm too small for Vijayanagar and I'm too big for anyone else. So, at least anyone else in my area. So I guess what we're gonna do is we're going to set you guys to Protect trade in Coromandel. Try to take as much control of that as possible. Now we're going to need to integrate candy eventually, but I don't think it's super important to do it immediately. The issue is that I like that. So I actually start out with a reasonably old ruler in this. And our income is not bad. So we still have no possible rivals. 
I have a loan because I took out a loan with Jane's to give them some stuff. That's why I have 220 of both of these is because I uh, did a little bit of stuff with my peeps. That is a very good queen. Please become my regent. <laughs> Our ruler can die now and be replaced with the queen, and I will be very happy, but probably not going to happen. Uh, local trade power. The local goods produced... I feel like, I honestly feel like this is better for me, because I don't think the trade value of this province is very high. Yeah, trade of this province is very high. Okay, so what were we going to look at now? We have 11,000 troops, which is quite a few. Uh, we're going to actually hire a general. Uh, do we want to make our ruler a general or make our heir a general? The heir is kind of trash. You know what? I'm going to make my heir a general. And it's a three shock general pretty quickly, so we'll go ahead and do some drilling. It'll be fine. And we can get things going. So my goal right now is to basically survive the very beginning until I can accomplish a couple of quick objectives. So my first objective is to secure Madre as a vassal. So I'm probably going to be doing that via conquest. I'm kind of hoping here that I'll be able to set someone as a rival eventually. Because I would really, really like to not have to throw all my admin power away right at the beginning. I'm very big right now. And it would be nice to be able to go in against some of these nations down here. Like, these guys aren't that much smaller. Because if, if I could go in against somebody to over here, that would help a lot. And let's see. I want to get Andra as a vassal because they have a couple of uh, cores that I can exploit. Yeah, all this stuff is going to be stuff that I'm going to want to take with Madre as a vassal. Do I want to ally Madre? I don't think I want to ally them. Okay, these guys are now at war with the Bamanis. Perfect. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to my Diplo feedback. And... I'm going to set this as a province of interest so that we can take control of that. How are we doing with our vassal? 7% liberty desire. It's a lot of trust. So... See, this is a situation where, as Madre, you can just jump in and immediately, like, go Yahoo. In this case, it's a little harder to deal with. Interesting. So I can become a pirate republic. I 
I don't think I want to do that. So this gives me plus 2% missionary strength, which is useful. This is also useful. Also, what do I need total? It looks like I need a similar set of things as before. I'm not in I have never done this start before. This is my first time attempting a uh, coach run. So this is going to be an interesting uh, startup. Okay, so Cochin is now vulnerable to attack. Vinod is now vulnerable to attack. Vinod is allied with Kalakund. Cochin is allied with Kalakund. And you are allied with Misor. The issue here at its core is this nation is kind of in my way. I think I need to make two more cogs. I think seven is a good number of troops to try to dive with. I do not think that I would want to do it with five. So, do I want to make, no, I'm not gonna build anymore. I don't need more troops than I'm gonna be able to put on a boat. And I actually am strong enough that I can probably handle this stuff as long as I'm able to get through their territories. So the question here is whether Vigianagat is actually going to be able to win this fight. Historically, they have not in my uh, experience, but that's in very large part due to the fact that I have a tendency to be backstabbing them and causing all manner of problems for them. They must avoid favoritism. So what the heck is my religion doing? So, gotcha. So I actually have plus 5% discipline passively. That's actually really good to know. I have you working in Vinod still. That's fine. I need more claims than I have. Okay, we're going to make a claim on Madre. They are allied with Misor. Misor is bigger. Or is it Misore? It's probably Misore, right? Either way, uh, what I can do is basically just drop straight in on their armies once I have uh, my boats built. So we are going to disable army drilling. And since I do have... I have the concern that these guys are going to be a disloyal vassal and cause problems for me. But even if they're a disloyal vassal, I don't have any valid rivals. So it's not like anyone's actually going to support their independence. Once these finish, I'm gonna basically just drop in here. If I don't get access, crap. 
So basically, I don't have the ability to easily get in there, but that's okay. And that would give only one nation's navy that I have to worry about as well, which is good. If I only have to worry about Misor's navy, or sorry, not Misor, uh, Madre's navy, then I basically don't have to worry about a navy. Because their navy is tiny compared to mine plus my vassals. In any case, we're just going to kind of chill here for the beginning. The beginning is a little bit slower uh, for your nations if you're not really big, but it's not actually as, as much slower as you might expect. Uh, the reason that this is particularly slow is because usually I would actually not be going to expand right now. I'm actually big enough right now that I'd like to just go after places like Vinod um, and do like a power, a project power, show strength, you know, humiliate rival, do all that kind of stuff, get myself some extra uh, monarch points, put myself ahead in technology. The project power, or... Uh, what is it? Show strength is particularly amazing. You're going to get a huge amount of power projection that's going to drop you up above 50. And in addition to getting that, you're also going to be getting 100 in every monarch point. So you get more uh, monarch point generation as well as simultaneously getting more um, just like monarch points flat out. Uh, from the plus 100. And that plus 100 is particularly impactful at the very start of the game where it allows you to get uh, pike square and things like that really quickly. But more than that even, if you look at the very beginning of the game, part of the very beginning is a race to get to admin tech 5. And anything you can do to speed up how quickly you get to admin tech 5 has a really huge effect on your overall... Um, uh, on the run as a whole. Because when you get to rank 5, you suddenly have the ability to stop using Monarch points completely to uh, do tech. You don't need to tech anymore. Which means if you can do it before the year 1500, you can do it before you start having to accrue any penalties at all. Which means you never do accrue any of those penalties. Okay, so once we've got our ships together, which is to say right now. I guess that okay. I'm going to bring both of them together and we are going to declare on you. We have our claim. We are going to take it. Unfortunately, we have the slight problem that <laughs> the Bamanis are just getting crushed by Vigianagata right now. I don't like it, but there's not much I can do about it at this particular moment. I can get my alliance with Andra. That's a very, very important thing to get done. That alliance will be useful for most of the game. Not most of the game. Most of the early game. Most of the introduction. Uh, because of the fact that they're small enough that it's not unreasonable to think that I can vassal them. And because they are one of the allies of Vijayanaga, Vijayanaga as a has to kind of think about whether they are going to invest into uh, dealing with me there. So we do not have military access here, which means as long as we get here and win this fight before military access is done in any of these nations, uh, these guys have nowhere to escape to. And as a result, I will basically just plow into them and wipe out their whole army. And they still do not have military access, which means they have nowhere to escape. So, cool beans. Uh, we've wiped their army, and now we can uh, basically just vassalize them during this war. Uh, Misor, do we want to even get involved with? I don't really feel like I want to get involved with Misor in any meaningful capacity. Do we have... Nope. Nope. There's no valid pathway to get to there, so I don't know what these guys are doing exactly. 
Do I have any siege? I do not. All right, so next, uh, I need... Did I get... I can't get a claim on Calicut yet. So what do I want to do exactly? Do I want to take control of all this territory and then not core it? Until later. Seems reasonably silly. Like, I, I don't know that there's any real utility in doing that. Okay, we're going to... We don't want to detach Siege uh, because we don't have a large enough navy relative to the size of their navy. The, this navy is just chilling in port for some reason, so... Like, we've got a lot of warm bodies here, but we don't have a lot of real oomph at our disposal right now. So, this will get us a peace treaty with Misor. I still have no possible rivals. I want rivals. Do I want to improve my relations with the Bamanis? I think I do, actually. The Bamanis right now aren't that far away from being willing to ally me. And they're going to be substantially weakened after this. Vigianagat is taking a big chunk out of them. But who else is a better option, right? Like, there's, it's not like I have some other option nearby that is going to do the job for me better. Do I want... I guess it doesn't matter what I want. We're gonna... We're gonna do it. There's a substantial difference in their skill versus ours. We do have substantially more ships. And that looks like it's making a big difference. Right now, we don't have any real damaged ships. So we're basically just throttling their navy. And once we win this fight... We captured one, that's great. So we captured a ship, and then uh, we lost the ship that we captured. <laughs> so, not exactly optimal, but oh well. So, we're now looking to uh, set these guys as a vassal. Do we want to do it that way? No, we're going to actually just annex them and then we're going to release them as a vassal. It's not... my preferred means of getting a vassal, but I think that it's better than wasting uh, Diplo points on another strategy. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so we're just going to move our troops back home. Uh, if we do have anybody come in here, because of the fact that we are controlling a fort here, if we come in, we do not have any sort of penalties. We don't have to worry about anything. So, don't have military access there. But we do have military access through Calicut for some reason. So, Candy got ac access through Calicut. Do we want to dive Misor? Because it's going to be a long time before we finish this war otherwise. So I guess, yeah, we'll do that. It'll be fine. They don't have their army here already. Let's make sure that Misor... I guess I can just look at the total number of troops. In there. They actually have a bigger army than I do. No, I'm an idiot. 
I saw I saw this flag and I'm like, that's me. That's absolutely me. And it's like, nope, <laughs> that it. That ain't you. All right, so we are just going to, I guess, look at Misor. We're just gonna whisper sweet nothings in each other's ears. And I guess we will set Candy to support. All right, uh, next on the list, we've got Andra as an ally. How close are you to ally? You'll be a lot closer to allying with me once I do my business with you. Okay, so I already have all the claims that I need on this region here. So, unfortunately, Cochin is allied to Calicut. Vinod is allied with Kolathunad, which means that both of these entities are allied with someone who I can't get claims on comfortably. <laughs> We're just like sitting here to stand up. We're never going to have to worry about a navy again, so. Do we want. Come on, guys. You're set to attach. Just move to the right place. Just do it. Just do it. Man. Fortunately, if I declare on Vinod. Allied with that'll give a pretty clear opening for me to be attacked, and I don't want an opening to be attacked. I'm actually probably not even going to take any of this stuff yet. I'm going to wait until later. We're going to get this in one month. Actually, we're not. We're not going to get this immediately. Oh, yes, we are. That's innovativeness. Okay. I was going to say, you know, never mind. It's not really worth it. And then it's like, oh, wait, never mind. We get innovativeness. Totally worth it. As long as I can keep my monarch power gain on the up and up, we should be in good shape. The only issue is that... what I think I know how I want to handle this I'm not going to probably expand myself pretty much at all at the start I'm going to take control of Madre here and I might take some of this stuff I might not but predominantly I think I want to how are you doing, Nija? They have zero manpower. They're not going to be declaring any wars for a while. They have zero manpower and they have rebels. Now is actually a really good time to attack them. I'm not going to lie. So if I can get... I mean, it's not a great time to attack them. It will be a great time to attack them if they lose more of their army. They have 14 mercenaries right now, so they are going in hard on the Bamanis right now, and it's costing them a lot. The AI is very bad at warfare, and that pays off dividends for you because there's no reason for them to have this much trouble with beating someone that tiny up. I don't get inflation for that, do I? I do get inflation for that. Okay, let's do that. I'm keeping an eye on their troop numbers because I want to see if they're losing any fights. If they lose a fight, or even just have a fight, it's going to be very costly for them. Let's see if they have any debts as well. 
So, they have 0% inflation, they have 0.4% inflation. So they have, I think, four loans already? Are you allied to someone? All right, good. I cannot declare. Their only ally is someone that I can't declare war on. And yeah, I, they don't have reasons for it because of the fact that they're not getting called. It's me, like, attacking them directly, attacking their vassals. So. Unfortunately, I can't see just how much, like, total money they have in debt. But... Interesting. They do have five war exhaustion. Jeez. Yeah, this explains why I had such an easy time facing off with them. Like, I never had any trouble playing as Madre before. I was looking at my start, I'm like, how on earth did I have no trouble with this? And then it's like, oh, that's how. <laughs> oh, I can set a rival now. So I, can add, I can't add a new rival as long as I'm at war. But once I take this province, I can set someone as a rival, and then I can release uh, Madre as a vassal. Potentially, I might want to go up against Vigianagar in that context, and we'll just have to see. We'll have to see. I wouldn't want to take all of their cores back because then they're just gonna escape, <laughs> but it might be worth it to just take a couple of key like ports, like take these two provinces, for instance. Though the, the issue with taking like, uh, those. Wow, those peasants are not very good at fighting, it turns out. Your friend is not coming to help. <coughs> oh shit. I have attrition here? Okay, so we've got... I'm just going to build some spy networks over here. It's fine. Alright, as soon as this war is over... I can, uh... get what I want. So we're gonna call this person back. I could build some more troops and then send them just recklessly into this hill, but I don't really think that's my best option. Looks like they don't have any Separatist Rebels either, which is too bad. <sighs> it's such a long wait. Oh. Well, that's a problem. But it's a huge problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. So did they take back... Let's 
Seventeen percent for evangelism. Ooh. So how is thirteen thousand troops, five of whom are mercs? That is interesting. That is a smaller army that I'm capable of fielding right now. I need to peace out with these guys before I declare war on them. But I think what I might want to do is... Never mind, we're not going after Vigianica now. Oh, jeez. That's... We're not going to have the advantage over them. Ooh, <gasps> they're Madrein Separatists. That's why. Shit, we might get that stuff for free. How are they doing? They're building a bunch of mercs. That's what they're doing. So they are allied with Calicut. Which means that I can't set them as a co-belligerent. Oh, there we go. So we can do this, uh, get the peace done, and we can now see what happens when we release them as a vassal. This will give us eight karma. They have 43% liberty to that, which is not too bad, actually. That's not too bad at all. So we can go ahead and get a royal marriage with them. They're not, as long as they're not starting it disloyal, I'm honestly happy. So <clears throat> do I want... To go a conquering. I honestly don't think I do. It seems a little weird to not want to do the conquest right now. But because of the fact. That unfortunately it looks like they are winning against all their rebels. They have like no manpower and are not in a great position, but they're going to be coming back into a strong position really fast. Like, I don't think that these separatists can survive by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, they're there. There they go. Actually, they're, they're at that percentage, but they are going to become problematic very quickly now that I think about it. Okay, so we're gonna get this Diplotech up ASAP. I did not actually demand military support. That's why I was behind them on that tech. Mistakes were made. I can actually take this from the monastic order. If I want. I don't think I want to, though. We're getting Marketplace. We were not the first in the world to get it, unfortunately. But that's okay. So we're going to get National Ideas, and I think we are going to take... I don't think we can afford 
to take colonization second. Because if we take religious first, then we have an eternity because we're spending all of our admin power pumping up the thing before we actually get the chance to get things going the other way. So we're at 34% liberty desire with them right now. Uh, I am going to have to start building more troops to keep them in line, but I actually am only at half of my force limit right now. Do I want to just build a bunch of troops and then dive into Vichyanaga? They have 19 mercenaries right now because they're having so many troubles with their rebels. But we both have the stuff. Do I want to annex any vassals yet? I would prefer to be able to get away with using no diplo power on anything other than tech and ideas for the foreseeable future. That's my preference. I just halved my income. Do we want to go after you guys? Oh, right. Nope, we have no possible... I forgot. I forgot, I forgot. I could have had some power projection for free. I wouldn't have been able to get very much of it because I'm now no longer small enough. Help admin. Give me that admin. An admin power boost would be very useful right now. 23,070 perks. Yeah, I want to take a look at their economy again. They have two war exhaustion. They have 0.9% inflation, which means they presumably have quite a few dingers, quite a few things. So I'm going to wait until next month and we'll see whether their number is going up or down. Looks like it's going up. Weirdly enough. Nice. I like it. So we got another plus 25. So hopefully we'll be able to get national ideas reasonably quickly. Yeah, it looks like their income is going up. Like they have more money each month, which is, uh, it's very surprising. It really is. It's surprising how effectively they can have such a huge navy, or sorry, not a huge, uh, such a huge army of exclusively mercenaries with basically no extra costs. It's like, how are you balancing this budget? Then again, they might have deleted them all. I don't think they have. Prestige. So, they still have 17 mercenaries. They, they have no manpower to speak of. So, any fights that they have to do are very expensive. They might actually end up losing this province to Ginji. Because they don't seem to be trying to take it back. I don't know how many like separatists there are there, but they seem to be doing a pretty damn good job for themselves.
I think I want to go with religious third. I want... I want everything. I want all the things. That's what I want. I want an alliance with you, actually. Maybe I should get an alliance with the Bamanis. Okay. So, with the Bamanis allied to me, we now have access to what is arguably the more powerful force. Hey, Devil Dog, it's going good. I feel like Vigiana got it right now because of the, all the stuff that's going on back here might actually be weaker in practice than the Bamanis are. So... We'll see. But yeah, one thing that's going to be nice is being able to just expand out here again. Oh, that's the other nation that I need to get a claim on. You guys are so isolated. So let's do that. And what else is going to happen? So they are allied with Andra. If I declare war on them, Andra will be pulled in against me. But actually, if I pull Andra in with me, that would be useful. This is good. Congrats, Devil Dog. Yeah, it's it's all about, you know, learning how to handle all the, you know, many, many moving parts all at the same time. And once you've got it down, it goes pretty well. How far are we from this? A couple of years, maybe? I want to make this declaration now to save myself some trouble. None of these guys are fighting amongst themselves, which is kind of sad. Maybe if I de declare this, maybe Misor will be... Uh, oh, this decreases our karma. Interesting. So declaring war allows me to drop my karma. It increases from honoring alliances, releasing vassals, releasing nations of peace deals, returning cores, and converting provinces. Karma decreases from starting wars and taking provinces. Interesting. We want to... I'm going to set these guys as co-belligerent. Just for the hell of it. We're going to pop in here. Okay. That's not good. My navies are not all together. Oh god, they have such a huge navy. That's a problem. Uh, this is a big problem. Okay, we're getting the hell out of here. Hot diggity. That is a lot of, uh... That's a lot of problems. Do not have military access through any of this territory.
It's one thing that I did not actually consider. Is, oh right, I don't have much of an AV. So, Calicut. I hate that. Minus 10 trade power in our home node. None of the, this is not actually progressed at all. So it's tempting to not even leave a siege behind, but I'm going to leave a siege behind anyway. How good are you? 3-3. Three, three. So this is not going to be a great fight for me, except obviously I'm outnumbering them by a sizable margin. That's useful. Should have enough tr Ooh, no, that's a problem. Okay, it's not a problem, we're fine. Why would there be a problem? There's a problem. No problem at all. Okay, I no longer have to worry about an amphibious assault because uh, there's no amphibious to assault. So, uh, Candy is now going to be set to aggressive, and they will hopefully go beat those guys up. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to arrive on the 30th, so these have zero morale. It's over. So, there's now no army on either of these uh, entities. Whoops. And we can move this guy. So in 10 years, we can get Monarch Power again. I need to remember to do that. For now, this is a pretty sizable fleet. We actually got a breach here, so that's good. This is going to go a little bit faster now. I'm not going to be able to piece these guys out. And I probably won't be able to piece them out until the war is basically over, unfortunately. So, Vigiana is in fact getting its manpower back up. And how are they doing on loans? They haven't had to take out any new loans, but they're, they have less money in the treasury now than they did just now. I still think that their uh, income is growing overall, but it looks like they're going to lose this province. Because, I mean, it's been a long time. Are they going to, at some point, get it back? It's not clear. So we're at 29% liberty desire now. That's pretty small. It's not a problem. But if I improve, if I increase their size by very much, it's going to start escalating rapidly. So our innovativeness is decreasing for some reason. could possibly be so much more advanced than me that my innovativeness is dropping. That doesn't make any sense. What the hell are you talking about? What? <laughs> I'm going to be one of the first countries in the world to get rank 5 national ideas. 
Where, why is my innovativeness dropping? I am legitimately very confused right now. Oh, they're at war right now. Oh, they're con trying to conquer Vinod. Interesting. Unfortunate for them that they're going to lose some ships. They're going to spend a bunch of energy. And they pull, they use the favor to pull in Andra. So that's super useful because this nation isn't going to exist when I'm done. There's not, they can't like, they can't do that. And the other thing is that they're going to help me siege down Colophund. Possibly. Are you at war with just me, though? Yeah, it looks like they didn't help. Interesting. So, Jaffna just got annexed. Uh, I haven't restarted exactly. I'm playing as a different nation, uh, but I've basically restarted to try the like proper run where I'm doing like as a minor nation. This nation has a achievement uh, that requires taking over like a huge amount of territory, which is very um, appropriate for sort of the world conquest style run where you're getting uh, those big achievements like. Uh, the sun never sets on the Indian Empire because you basically have to annex all of India first to get that. And so it's a natural pairing for the achievement set that Kota has. Kota actually has a reasonably difficult start, though. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised at how crappy a start they have because it turns out that because they don't really have access to rivals and i'm not going to have access to rivals for a very long time you can't use uh show strength and who I'm, I'm telling you who there's no one around me that has technology levels orissa has a rank five military okay whoop de freaking do this is not enough that I should be behind neighbors in terms of losing innovativeness. I don't know what's going on here. It's a very weird mechanic. I've seen it activate when I was like just barely behind people, like it's activating now. And I've gone for 60 years without developing my Diplotech and had it not activate at all. I don't understand what causes it to activate or not activate. It's very strange. Uh, let's see, we've got... October of this year, we will be able to get national ideas. That's perfect. This is, this is actually perfect timing. So basically, what that means is that we are currently on the exact path that we want to be on. Okay, somebody else got national ideas, which means that we can now get it. And that means that we are prepared. So. Yeah, I feel like I have to get exploration. Once we finish exploration, we can fabricate claims in colonial regions, which means that we'll be able to fabricate claims in Africa. And that allows us to start going after some really tiny nations over there, as well as start consolidating trade power in this region. Because as soon, when we start taking control of Zanzibar and setting it to trade company ter territory, uh, that changes the name of the game, my friends, by quite a significant margin. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to... I don't need admin power for anything in particular right now. Uh, 
admin power I can just use to take control of all of this now. The time limit is over for when uh, that becomes a problem. You basically just want to be able to get those first two technologies as quickly as humanly possible so that you don't run into problems later on. So how long do we have before we can do this? It takes 20 years for this to cool down. So that's actually really good to know. And hopefully soon we'll be able to afford some other stuff. But yeah, we're going to get a pretty decent amount of overextension in that jazz around here. We have 100% war score, and what is our plan? We could probably annex Colophon right now. It costs us 20 Diplo power. So we're definitely not going to do that. So what that means is that we need to look at what we can do to you. It gives us the maximum amount of prestige. And we're actually going to not do this. 15, how much? I don't think that's worth it. My economy is going to be growing very rapidly all of a sudden, and so I'm going to get a huge amount of inflation for very little actual gain in terms of my economy in the next couple of years. So unfortunately, because of the fact that these guys are not my uh, rival... I don't get a huge amount out of that. I just get some prestige, but I do get my prestige back to where it needs to be. We get 22 over, 22 over aggressive expansion here. We'll see how much we get with uh, Vijayanagar. So we've conquered this and we don't have any like vassals that this is just like free territory for me. No. So that means we are just going to make this core. And we are in fact prepared for that. We just we aren't prepared for both of them, but that's okay. So Cochin is currently at war with Colathund and only Colathund. They are probably going to annex them. Who is the one that's doing the attack right now? Calicut is the aggressor, it looks like. Yay, we have a rival available. Vigianagar, okay, why question, what? Okay, that's, that's fun. Okay, we can enact a new government reform. Uh, we can empower the Polygars. That gives us 10% com combat ability and 5% development cost reduction. Uh, that 5% development cost reduction is, like, crazy good. So, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and what else do we need? Okay, uh, Cochin, how are you doing? Are we going to declare war on you and Calicut now? Calicut and Cochin have a 12,000 troop army. Oh, shit, they have a th rank 3 general. Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like a be it. Uh, do I want to go after the Maldives instead first? Probably. So. My navy should be sufficient to get this job done. There's only 4,000 troops here. 
They have 10 ships total. Where's my fleet? Yeah, I should have no trouble with this. And once we get all of this cord up, this is so much unrest. So much unrest. That war exhaustion penalty, man. Do we want to take the Maldives now? Yes, we should take the Maldives now because we need to uh, get ourselves in the right position. The Maldives are going to be a uh, basically a jumping off point. for our colonial expeditions. So hopefully we can jump straight to here. So Vigiatica has actually warned us, and that's pretty interesting. And not a huge problem, honestly, because I'm not really planning on going to war with anyone else yet. Right now, I want to get up to probably a rank five military. And then once I've gotten up to rank 5 military, do I even want to get rank 5 military first? I really should. Rank 5 is probably good enough to justify it. Then again... So, I gave somebody... Like, I have one of these provinces controlled to the people who actually give me the stuff, didn't I? I don't think I did. Did I take control of a... The only center of trade I have, I can't assign to an estate. There's an estate that gives you a 20% reduction to the cost, but I guess it doesn't matter because we'll just do it on our capital anyway. It's fine. Uh, let's see. So... I'm going to wait for right now. Wait, the Bamanis are under attack from Vichyanaga again, and they're getting their asses kicked again? Oh no. That's not good. They have 1.5% inflation. They are crushing it. Well played. So that walks down one of my allies. Like the Bamanis just became completely useless to me. Pretty much. All right, so let's take a look here. What is my current karma? I need to be increasing my karma right now. So, lose six Ducats to gain 15 prestige. I think this is worth it. This is a great time for charity. And that is a lot of peasants. Holy crap. So, I'm not fighting those. I don't know why Madre has more of a... Whoops, I'm an idiot. I didn't start coring my shit. This is 23%. Uh, let's see. So the Bamanis are just getting obliterated right now. This is going to be an interesting start. My current goal is basically just to get all the money I can, because any money that I have I can use on colonies. But actually expanding outward isn't a really major contributing factor for me right now anyway. 
So at some point I'm going to have to go up against this beast right here. And that is a serious problem. Because right now they are... I don't see any reason to keep fighting. I just want to end the fight, so I don't see any reason to leave this, because we're annexing them as soon as the fight is over. Okay. So we get a little bit of aggressive expansion, but not very much, because basically everyone around there is gone already. I need to set a rival. Why do I have to set Vigianaga as a rival? That does not make any sense. I should not be losing power projection to the fact that I haven't set the biggest thing in the entire area as my rival. And, you know, it won't let me pretend that these people are relevant rivals. Just let me pretend. It's, it's fine. You know... Propaganda is a thing. It's very useful. We'll just make use of propaganda. It's fine. Uh, hello. Looks like we're going to be spending about two months. And yeah, the key here is that I don't know if this is going to be a successful startup for us right this time. Like, I don't think that I would need, necessarily need to change very much in terms of what I did here to get it to be successful. But this particular start, I'm having a lot of trouble because these this nation is just being so aggressive. And they're using the fact that they can just build as many uh, troops as they want to just go ham. They have all the money. Because they're controlling the trade node here. So they're being really aggressive and they're doing a really good job with it. They get props from me to be sure. So I have a thing here, but if I declare, they won't, de they won't accept. Perfect. So uh, let's not do that yet, because I'm going to have all these Separatists. Do I want to deal with the Separatists in some way first? If I don't declare now, I'm pretty sure that Vigiana got is actually going to get claims on everything. But it's fine. I'm actually not going to expand right now, because I have more important things to do than expand. Namely... I need to set this to have the development edict. And do I need to upgrade you? I think I do. I can't upgrade you. There's no way I'm going to have the money for that. So I need... I actually need to check this because I forgot what this the numbers are for this. So E4 what is this called? Um Institution. So, there's a very convenient uh, thing here that gives me the final development for provinces. So, the final development for a province of seven development is going to be 35. And that is, so 35 development is the, is the, dev that we're going to get to with this 
and that will be... <laughs> that's gonna be just gigantic. <laughs> that's gonna be so, so gigantic. Oh, man. Uh, t also, to those watching uh, directly on YouTube, uh, I don't actually respond to the chat there because YouTube is weird, and so I can't consolidate all of the chats into one uh, conveniently on the application that I'm using. Uh, so, yeah, if you go to the Twitch stream, you, I'll actually be able to answer questions. Um, but I can't, I can't keep them both op open at the same time because I use the other, I use, I have to use the screen real estate for other things. Uh, at any rate, uh, what was the plan? Yes, so we have quite a bit to do here. Uh, what that means is we have two so 33 which means that we can't have can't have more than the other two combined I don't know. it doesn't matter because we have we have plenty of time before we're gonna run into this as a problem. What I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be just stockpiling. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is fine actually. The decentralized ruling is gonna be See, if this was my capital, then I'd do it automatically, but I think we're just going to send it to the lawyers, let the lawyers handle it. Uh, we are actually going to want to do this now, because I don't have enough money to maintain this. So, do I have anything else that I need to do to reduce my costs? I don't remember... Stability, land maintenance. Okay, I do not have, as this nation, I do not get anything that reduces development costs, it looks like. Which is really too bad. I don't have an estate that I can give something to. I guess it, it get, or not guess, that, that I can bribe to get my stuff up. Uh, one second, actually. Oh. Total development needs to grow by 25. So this is 5. This is 7. This is 5. So that's 17. Plus 8. And 17 plus 8 is exactly what I need. But Vigianagat is now willing to join. God dang it. Okay, so I should have attacked when I had the opportunity, because that would give me another 5%. And we're, we aren't going to set them as a... I, I don't care what you say. Look, I was looking for a rival before, right? Like, I'm happy to have a rival. But please do not force me to make them... I mean, rival Misor. Misor is reasonably large. I couldn't just attack their army willy-nilly like I wanted to. It's, it's big enough to justify... Oh, wait, maybe I should actually have uh, people... Protecting trade in my primary trade node. God, what an idiot. Oh man, I'm good at this game. Okay, so... Oh, it's actually late enough also that we can... No, we can't. We need another six years for that. Look. We've got positive income. We're fine. Everything is fine. So... Unfortunately, we have the development cost increased from this... But maybe we can get some of this stuff going. <laughs> so the Bamanis only have five troops right now. So luckily, it looks like 
VGN again is like not going too crazy. It does look like they have a total of like 17 loans that they've taken or something like that. I guess most of that isn't actually loans that they've taken. Some of that's probably uh, just not repaying the old loans. Oh shit. That's really crappy. I guess it's fine. Uh, let's see. It's interesting. Andra would not join. I could actually pull Andra into a war against Vigianica this way, which is kind of cool. Uh, I want to take a look, though. They are currently over a thousand Ducats in debt. So that's quite a lot of debt. Like, that's a pretty sizable amount of debt for them to have. So we just got some free Diplo power. Yes, please. I'm hanging on to this stuff right now, but I probably should not be. I should probably just be starting to develop. I can probably reduce my costs a little bit more. What, what was it? Ah, yes, I can reduce it by another 5%. I think the base cost is 50, right? Base cost is 50. So the base cost of 50, we're looking at, is about two and a half per click. That's not a huge, that's, I'm only losing seven to just click this three times right now. I say that, but. This is actually getting very... Oh, I can't increase the thinger because it's higher than both of these combined, which actually means that this becomes a very simple thing to calculate. We are just going to be uh, pumping it like this. So And right as I blow all of that Monarch power, my stability drops. Why do we need 149? Jesus Christ. Oh, overextension. And the religious unity. Oh my god, that religious unity. Holy crap. That is intense. I guess my religious unity is going to improve, though. As I keep developing my capital, my religious unity will go up because a larger percentage of my uh, total nation will just be sitting here in the capital. So, Royal Marriage Arthur for Mother. So, Vinod has a lot of separatist problems right now. This province also has separatist problems, but. Those problems are currently in the process of being managed, kind of. Whereas the problems over here are not being managed in the slightest. Okay, so we can actually invest in Quest for the New World, and we are the first to do it. Uh, do we want to split that fleet in half right now? I think we do. So we're going to split the fleet in half. Uh, we are going to pop down here. Nope, we don't actually need to, now that I think about it. We don't need to do that because we it's not going to take very long for us to explore, and we don't really need to get the exploration done until we have uh, the ability to actually colonize somewhere, and we can't colonize until we get quite a bit more gentle power. Now, you guys are just going to chill here. And once this shit is cored, then I will actually increase the autonomy. Do I actually want to increase the autonomy now? 
Okay, serious question. Increasing the autonomy now will reduce the overall cost. But I think that the autonomy, it's going to be a largely irrelevant cost either way, so. I think it'll be fine. So, you are just going to get pumped. And every time I pump this, I'll be pumping this to keep it even. How much trade power do you have? None? Okay, so... Oh, this does give me local unrest reduction, though. You know what? I'll do that. I'll take the unrest reduction. Not a huge problem. So. How are you doing, Vijay? 17% inflation, or 1.7%. <laughs> that would be pretty crazy, actually, if they had 1 point. If they had 17%, that would be uh, a little out of control. Uh, let's see here. They only have 18,000 troops built right now, and we have a total between all of just our vassals. We actually have a larger army right now than they do. So, right now... We're actually in an okay position. So we need to... And it looks to me like the Bamanis have the potential to be able to recover at least a bit. But they are pretty heavily in debt and they're much smaller with less control over like a strong node. So we have a rebel uprising in Vinod. How many separatists is this? This is 11,000 separatists. So I think it makes very little sense to wait at this point. I screwed up and forgot to core that as quickly as I could. And that's going to just come back to bite me. That's okay. So we have all the claims that we're gonna get. We I, it's tempting to think that I'm like wasting diplo slots right now, but I'm not really sure where I want them. I guess I could just build a spy network in VGA and on Vijana got it because they should be technologically doing pretty well. They're currently ahead of us in military power. They're probably gonna be ahead of us in every uh, tech type. So, yeah, it makes it makes sense. So, it looks like it's if you are currently uh, larger than both combined, you can't do it. So, which makes sense mathematically. Uh, the way to negate the institution's tech penalty is just to get the institutions. Uh, the way that you do that is different for each, each institution, but if you watch what I'm doing right now, the reason that I'm developing uh, Cote, or Colti, or I don't know how to actually pronounce that, uh, but the reason that I'm currently developing my capital is because every time you develop a province, uh, do I actually want to make a state out of you? Making a state doesn't increase the value of this province by very much. Okay, I'm not going to make them a state yet. Uh, let's see. So, if you look here, Renaissance is currently stalled at 12.82%. Every time you click this button, this is going to get stalled at a higher level. So, uh, when you're playing as a non-European, Getting certain institutions takes an extremely long time because they have to spread all the way to you. So uh, the institutions that almost always 
uh, are in Europe is Renaissance always spawns in Europe. It has to spawn in Italy. It doesn't have any other viable pathways. There's no other way that it can spawn. Colonialism will always spawn in the old world. Now, what that means is that it can't spawn in America, but it can spawn in Asia. So as an example, in my Malacca runs, it's not uncommon for me to actually be the, uh, the founder of colonialism because the only requirement for being the founder of colonialism is I think you have to have a port. Let's see. You have, to, you have to have a port, and so any port city that is basically owned by a person that has found one province anywhere in the New World, right? So if you found anywhere in North America or South America, you get uh, the ability to potentially spawn this. I'm going to see if I can spawn this this game. It's not terribly likely. Now... I think, but I'm not positive on this, I think that each port is checked independently. So, th so the way to maximize your chance of spawning colonialism is not to get more territories that you have seen, but to actually increase the, um, the number of ports that you have in your empire. So the more ports you have, the easier it is to spawn it. But colonialism is going to be random, so you don't know. Right, it, it, You're probably not going to get it if you're in Asia, so you might have to force it if you aren't planning on going like a full bum rush and uh, forming a colonial nation within the first 20 or 30 years of it spawning. Uh, it, de it depends on where your exact position is. Last game I actually forced spawned it because I was spending so much time and energy in Africa that I couldn't form a colonial nation very quickly. Uh, we'll see how that goes this time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, it just depends on the particular uh, institution. Generally speaking, generally speaking, it is, I think, uh, it's generally useful to uh, spawn them manually because overall you're going to spend less uh, on developing your capital and in addition, developing your capital is actually a very powerful thing early in the game. Like, it's easy to underestimate just how much potency you get by just taking your capital from 7 development or whatever development it is, all the way up to being a 35 development metropolis. Having that metropolis is actually really useful. Now, that's mostly useful if you're a smaller nation. Uh, but, like, I, I would argue that in many cases, you're much better off having a uh, more fully developed capital than you are even having, like, um, whatchamacallit, a... Like, conquering the land and using the, it to core... I think that your your overall power level increases faster by developing. That is crazy. At least in the beginning when you're developing your capital and it's a tiny uh, capital. Once you've developed your capital further, then it's like, okay, well, never mind. So Maldives is now cored. And this is down to 4.2%. But 4.2% is still a lot of percent. 4.2 is a lot higher than zero. We are in okay, so here's a question. This is... No, we don't have a fort in either of these provinces. So the hope is basically that the rebels spawn on top of me. Alright, so the thing that you're going to be upgrading is the total development of the province. So the, the province has three different categories for development. So you have the base tax, you have base production, and you have base manpower. Um, each of these is associated with admin, diplo, or military tech. So admin, diplo, military. Um, and basically, when you are developing your province, it'll give you just a little bit, and it doesn't matter which type you're developing. 
The reason that I'm going with exclusively admin and military is because for my run, I need to be rushing my colonial stuff because for a couple of reasons. The first is that I'm going to get this colonist faster, which I don't have the income to justify using it anytime soon anyway. So I'm probably not going to be using it until here anyway. But more importantly, fabricating claims overseas in colonial regions is not the right thing. So that's actually not useful to me. I should have gotten... No, that wouldn't have helped me either. Huh. I guess I could have used the other one. It's fine. We're going to have to actually colonize, though. That sucks. So we're going to need to colonize our way over here so that we can start fabricating claims. But I... For whatever reason, I forgot that this is colonial regions, not trade regions. Trade regions is in uh, the other one. So if you if you finish uh, admin, you get no, nope, not admin. Sorry, expansion. If you finish expansion, you can fabricate claims in trade company regions, which is really nice. Uh, interestingly enough, it also gives you five states right off the bat. That would be really useful early on. It might actually be worthwhile to get this first. The problem is that how are you going to justify it? I guess you would just give... You have you have a lot going down in Diplo at that point. I think this is a easier way to handle it. Humanism is really good. It's one of the best, um, like, overall uh, idea groups, particularly for new players, but for everyone it's amazing. It's just that it... If you get maxed humanism, it almost, like, deactivates the rebel mechanic completely. So, it is very, very handy. So, how are you doing now? They have 10,000 troops. Ten thousand. Ten thousand troops. I need. I need to take a look at their economy. Ten thousand troops is not a lot of troops. So they have. They're still sitting at one point seven percent inflation. See, the key is that they have a really big tax base. So I do I have concerns. I mean, I should have concerns considering, but I could actually attack here if I wanted. Looks like if I were to attack them, I could call in Andra, but I'd be calling Vigiana got into a war that I don't have any... I guess I could basically cripple their economy and then go from there. That's a possibility, I guess. I feel like it's a weak suggestion though. How many favors do you owe me, friend? I need to figure out how much they owe me. But yeah, humanism first is I would say generally not, shall we say, a standard starting point. It does make things much more stable. It's not as bursty basically. It doesn't give you like a really strong opening like direction so the, the when i'm going to just show up some of these idea groups so the basic gist for like first idea groups is there's a few different directions that people tend to go with them uh the first is if you already have a lot of easy claims and you're already expanding very rapidly and you're you're creating a huge you know vassal network Influence actually works really well as a first idea group. You get that 15% liberty desire gone and you get integrated elites immediately. This is a really powerful group if you have 
all of the expansion capacity in the world, and you're just looking to maximize your efficiency. Because I think that this is much more efficient than admin ideas early in the game. Core creation cost is useful, but it's not as useful as liberty, desire, and subjects and diplomatic extension costs combined. So I do think that influence is better early game because you're going to have so much that you have to give to your vassals. Uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, the other thing that people often go for a starting thing is religious because you get Dave's Volt. With Dave's Volt, you have a really powerful Casus Belli early on that allows you to just declare war on people. You don't have to ever care about claims ever again. It used to be that claims reduced the cost of coring. They don't anymore, so you don't have to worry about claims. You're just Dave's Volt and, you know, have fun. Uh, and the other one that people often will do is what I have gone with this run is exploration. Exploration in Asia is a weird choice. This is not a standard build, uh, but it's something that I'm doing specifically because I'm bursting to Africa as soon as I can to get that done. Uh, so that's the important thing that I'm doing this with. But for Asia, uh, for Eastern Asia, it's more common as well as for um, European nations, it's reasonably common. Hey, Monster Mash, how's it going? We're I'm just going through some of the early idea groups and explaining what they're used for while we talk about uh, while we go through and basically decide whether we're going to try to get into a pissing contest with Fijianica. <laughs> Which is to say, we will be, it's just a matter of when, right? It's just a matter of when. Uh, let's see, so... You can't really see the probability of getting Renaissance immediately, but in terms of how to see the spread of it, so the, the way that institutions spread is that uh, anything that has, um, let's see here, you can hover over this and you can see what modifiers will give you. Uh, Renaissance does not spread naturally anywhere outside of maybe like European Italian areas. Uh, so it's basically just nearby friendly province has it. So it'll just slowly expand across the globe outward from Italy. Uh, other ones have like different uh, criteria. Colonialism will spread automatically if in all of the ports of any nation that has a colonial nation under it. So you'll automatically start to accrue it even if you don't found colonialism, if you have a colonial nation. Um, but you can see that just by clicking on the province itself and then you just hover over this and it tells you what's, go what's up. Let's see. And... Got... I actually, I like doing a uh, colonization stuff with Malacca. Personally, I really I like like the Malacca colonizing strat because as Malacca, it's very easy for you to conquer your neighbors. And then once you've started conquering all of your neighbors, it's nice to be able to get um, it's, it's nice to be able to just steal the uh, institution from the Europeans. It doesn't take a huge amount of time for them to get it, but it actually takes longer than you might expect for them to actually finally get the institution, because it tends to take them a while before they form full colonial nations. So I kind of I kind of like them. The nice thing about them is that they have a really easy expansion strategy. And I'm actually really liking colonization as uh, South India, because colonizing into Africa very, very early basically cuts the Europeans out from Asia completely for the entire game. Because you colonize into Africa, and then as soon as you start like mass colonizing over here, you cut off all the trade from Zanzibar, which is all the trade basically from this entire region of the world, from getting to Europe. And you then can have the ability to just take out all their colonial nations. And if you take out the South American colonial nations in particular uh, and take over Mexico, what you'll find is that later on in the game, even into the 1600s, they still won't have any colonization in, um, in Asia because it's so far. Anyway, so that's, that's, a, uh, 
that's something that I was doing with my uh, previous my Vigiana got to run, and it was it was going pretty well. But I want to make a video, uh, kind of giving an analysis of what it was that I did and how I went about my strategies and things like that. Which means that I don't want to actually uh, run the game right now. But I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make that video tonight because I am tired and because I have uh, noises periodically on this end. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, potentially, but if you're if you're playing as India, right, then you're basically going to lock down all of this trade from here. All of this is going to Coromandel, right? This is all coming here. So all the trade from here to the east is under control because you're taking control of India because you're forming uh, the you're forming Bharat. So you want to take control of all this stuff anyway. So while technically yes, there is a pathway, and there's certain there's certainly trade here for them to get. I've, I found that I was surprised how tiny those nodes were, and actually over the course of the 100 years from the year 1500 to 1600, the total amount of trade in the Sevilla node was actually shrinking because I was getting more and more control, whereas typically those nodes, as, as power consolidates in the colonies and the, col the colonial regions, are keep getting more and more money in them. But even though more and more money was being generated in those colonies, it doesn't actually matter because you are you're taking it all for yourself. I, I I was surprised how well it worked. Like I was shocked how well it actually worked. Uh, but it worked really well. So I like I like tinkering with the uh, Asian nations. The and so it's it's fun to sort of figure out how I can get the most benefit here. So it looks like that warning is still applicable. <laughs> I don't know how long that warning lasts. Andra still has a rank four military, so we're definitely not gonna be going in anytime soon. I probably should not be sitting on negative stability. This is giving me a really major penalty to my legitimacy, and that's reducing my national unrest modifier so but then again pumping my stability is going to be cheaper the more I do this because yeah I don't think I actually should have taken control of these territories yet I should have finished this development first weirdly enough I should have just developed this up all the way and then decided to go annex uh, my neighbors this is a very weird start. This is a very, very weird start. Okay, let's take a look at your stuff now. Okay, they're still sitting on at least two loans. I'm going to take a look. They're currently less in debt than they were before. So they are starting to pay things off. Uh, how is their army? Sitting on 15,000 troops with 7,000 manpower. They have the ability to get a huge army in play. I am actually tempted to try a Hail Mary here. The problem is that I don't have the military tech. You know what? I'm going to worry about that when we actually have surpluses. Wow, we have oh, an atrociously bad air. That is pretty sad and pathetic. So, what are you guys going to do? 200 of these guys. Let's see.
Can you avoid India and bring trade with Malacca to Zanzibar? That's a good question. That's a very good question. It looks like you can. No, you can send it to the Cape of Good Hope. The Cape of Good Hope, though, is a much, much worse uh, a node. Because taking control of the entire Cape of Good Hope node, like controlling all of the provincial trade power in the Cape of Good Hope, is actually reasonably trivial uh, for an Asian nation to do pretty early. Um, because the Europeans that are colonizing really early focus on the Americas. They don't, they don't go all the way to South, Southern Africa. But the problem is the, the Ivory Coast is going to start stealing a lot of trade out of that node. And if you're collecting trade there, you're going to be weakening things. Whereas with Zanzibar, if you take complete control of all the provinces in the Cape of Good Hope, right, then you have 100% control of that node and no trade can be pulled forward from Zanzibar at all. So at that point, it's you basically you want to control the next one in line from the one that you're planning on trading at. Because, and since it's much, much harder to get complete control of both the Cape of Good Hope and get uh, control of uh, the Ivory Coast, because the Ivory Coast is very close to Europe and somebody's going to start throwing stuff in there, uh, it's, I think it's easier to, uh, it, I think it's more, it's going to be more consistent to be able to get the, uh, the Zanzibar node completely locked down to use. But if you do get like the Cape of Good Hope and you have the ability to say, you know what, maybe maybe we can fight France a little later, then, I mean, sure, it should probably work fine. Please don't die, my ruler. Please don't die too soon. If I lose to the Separatist Rebels because I wasn't paying enough attention, I'm going to be very sad. So we have 13 more development to get here in order to trigger Renaissance. So that is six more instances of seven admin power ticks, looks like, yeah. Yeah, it, like, it's, it, also, it also depends on, like, where your, like, nation is and where you're getting your money from and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to let these guys take this, and then I'm just going to defend here. I don't really want to weaken myself to the point where Vigiana decides to come at me. They still have manpower. And their economy is... Looks like they just took out some... Ooh, look at that. Interesting. Do they have under your unrest? Doesn't look like they have any unrest right now. That's too bad. They might have unrest up here. So these guys should walk up to me eventually. And once they do, that'll be good. There we go. So we're just going to defend here, and then we'll take back the other province. Let's see. Oh, nice. And they have zero uh, shock, so... Fire is completely irrelevant before the Age of Cannons.
Yeah, I've never I've never really paid that much attention to like the gold provinces. I, I guess it's because like the way that I tend to play, I'm getting so big so quickly that like the specifics of what's being like made in a province become less relevant than like is this province going to contribute to me having absolute complete domination of this entire trade node <laughs> if that makes any sense like so Calicut would join them Andra would not Vigianagari Diplorep is non-existence So Cochin has basically nothing. I'm wondering how I want to handle this situation up here. My guess is that they're going to keep trying to beat up on the Bamanis. Yeah, that's fair. Well, the, the strategies for multiplayer are just completely different than the strategies for single player. Because when you have a bunch of people who are playing this like a video game, as opposed to like vaguely emulating the, you know, political dynamics of, you know, 15th to 19th century Europe and the rest of the world, it really changes the dynamic quite a lot. People get a lot more aggressive. So, what do we want to do? Well, so we're not going to be able to get rid of the crappy dude, but on the plus side, we do get a bunch of time with our queen, who's actually pretty strong. Uh, on the other negative side, we now are two stability in the hole, and I absolutely am going to have to deal with that i think i don't i don't think there's a choice i think i have to just pump it i need 131 my religious unity is not great you know what i could do actually it's not a great strategy it would waste the admin power that i've already invested into these provinces but I could actually give these provinces over to Madre. These are very tiny provinces. But Madre is already about to get really big. So that's not a great thing. Yeah, it's okay. I'm not doing quite as well as I'd like. I'm the I'm a little annoyed with myself because I uh Am I just gonna eat it? I think I'm just gonna eat it for a little while longer. Because I'm a crazy person who wants to save like three monarch points by pumping this a little further. So, I just realized that this is 15, so I can do I can get this up to 16, so that's I can get another plus 4 uh, with military. <laughs> Vassals tend to be really useful, especially early game, for really pumping your overall, like, power level. You know what, I think I am... I guess I'm just going to set them as a rival, because... What else am I going to do, right? 
Send him as a rival. Get that power projection coming in. It's vaguely useful. Uh, let's see. So we're going to be able to do the last four. So once we get up to 31, we can uh, just pump it using the military from then on. Well, we are not getting any government reforms anytime soon. Not that we would anyway. We have like 0.37 coming in per month because everything has such high autonomy. Though maybe we are getting more just because of the fact that we have 0% autonomy in our capital and our capital is basically our entire nation. So what is our situation here like? We're at 4.1%. So we can get rid of that immediately when we uh, pump this stuff. So this is an odd number, so yes. Okay, good. So we will get the admin power up to... We will get two more points of admin, so that's gonna be about 200 more admin total. And then we're just gonna be spamming military power. The reason that I'm doing it this way and that I'm not pumping this faster is uh, I want to get the minimum total cost in admin power uh, to avoid uh, wasting it. Wasting a little bit of military power isn't as big a deal in my opinion. We're running a risk here because we are right next to one of the biggest nations in the world uh, with a pretty sizable army, that, and they have good manpower now, but it's fine. Everything is fine. Money in the treasury. They are at 3% inflation, so they are definitely having some problems. Take a look here. I can keep an eye, this is nice, on their total debt pretty easily. They still have a pretty decent amount of debt, but their debt is definitely going down, not up. So, how many trade? We have six favors with the Bamanis. So, if we're able to call the Bamanis and Andra into a war, against Vijayanagar, I think we can beat them. Now, if they get up to rank six military before we get up to rank five, which they are, that's objectively a thing that's going to happen. If that happens, and it will, it makes my situation a little harder. Uh but I still might be able to win out in the end. There's a, there's a couple of huge issues with my ability to actually project power because of the fact that um, my, my power projection requires that I have naval dominance. And this group of allies is not going to be able to take out their navy because the Bamanis are not a good naval ally. They have no navy at all. So, but once we've beaten them in one war, that is going to simplify matters moving forward by a considerable margin. So we just need to hope that we can get this stuff going the way that we want it to be. Look at that, look at these other 7%. They have the same ruling dynasty. Did we forget to do the thing? We forgot to do the thing, I think. We forgot to do the thing. God dang it. Okay, so we can get 50 military power if we want. That's such a huge amount of military power. More importantly, though... We can...
That is 150, which tips us over immediately. And now, uh, we're basically done here with admin power and all we're looking for is the other stuff. Uh, the Janes have a pretty sizable amount of stuff already. This gives them 10 influence. Do I want to... Do I want a loan right now? I need higher corruption. This will allow me to do this, which would be good. So let's do it. So it looks like th I actually can use this to get me slightly lower costs. And I don't think I'm gonna give any provinces to the Janes right now. So. It is tempting to give them some provinces. If I give. I haven't yet I core this yet. I need to, I'll core this after I've increased my stability back up. So yeah, we're just going to do this now. So we will get our Diplo support, and then that allows us to get an Explorer, which is not super great, but it does give me some innovativeness. We can choose our native policy. We're going to go with... It's only 25%, so since it's only 25%, it's not 100%, we are going to stick to uh, native coexistence until we get the ability that gives us minus 50% uprising chance. Then we'll switch over. Let's see. Yeah, I noticed that in a, in a previous run, and there, there are times that it's probably worth it to do that. Like, if you know that their influence is going to wear off very shortly anyway, you can get the extra 50 points, and then their influence is going to fade out anyway before uh, anything bad happens. Or you can give them a bunch of provinces and then just take them back. Let's see. I think we're set here. So we... Don't have the ability to use this person yet. Uh, let's go ahead and split this fleet. Do I want to start exploring now? Is it worth it to explore right now? I don't really have the capacity. I'm pretty sure that I can't actually colonize here yet. If I can call it, I might be able to get to this. I'm going to try it. It might cost me a little bit of time to try it, but I'm going to try it anyway. Because it might save me a ton of time. So, cost a little bit or save a ton. We will see which it is. And let's see, how are my... Innovativeness is decreasing again. That's no fun. And max. So they have 20,000 troops again. And I didn't actually check their inflation. Their inflation is still sitting at exactly 3%. They're considering attacking Misor. They are allied to the Bomanis. So if they attack Misor to do that, and Misor decides, gets the Bomanis involved, then that is probably the optimal time to uh, try to go in on them, would be my guess. It'd be nice. If they're already at war, does the thing come in? Let's 
Because once I can get Madre back where it is... Where it belongs. 126. Alright. Well, then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother getting a person yet. Then I'll I'll wait until later and just accumulate money with those ships. So our stability is starting to get back under control. We're gonna get one more tick of that, and then we will be able to start going aggro again. So the Bamanis are currently at war with Misor and, oh, sorry, the Vigianagata is at war with the Bimanis and the Bamanis, and the so and so. Let us see if we can get them in debt further. Oh, nice. I like that. This is the, like, Calicut got brought into this? Interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So I might be able to do some super sneaky business here. And if I can, that'll be really awesome. So these guys are probably not going to be willing to join in on a war against Cochin now. Now the important thing is that if Vijayanagar is not going to come into a war, if they're not willing to join a war against Cochin, so if they do not want to accept because they go into debt further, and they simply just don't want to join, they run into a very serious problem. Because then you can do the extreme cheese of, like, ludicrous exploitation of the alliance system uh, of the sort of like war call to arms system generally so i hope we can do that today because it makes me very very happy and it's the most ridiculous nonsense in existence and i love it and i want to do it i'm actually going to start uh building a spy network here because it's been quite a while since I fabricated that claim. There's a non-zero chance that we're going to have some trumps here. So it looks like Misor is actually beating the crap out of their enemies, but not forever. Eventually the uh, army is actually going to show up. So the key here is if I can get they have they have a lot of manpower lost that's good that's a good start uh, we need to start building more troops because we need to be at our, at our force limit when this happens when all the shit goes down we need to have our force limit uh, do we want to wait? Yes. Okay, so now is the time where things start to get serious. So one of the two nations is now out of the war, right? And you just have uh, Calicut and Vigianagar just sitting on Misor. Misor isn't going to come back. But in the process, they are losing troops... And they're expending money. And that's the wrong nation. As soon as they are no longer willing to join in a war, I can declare a war against Cochin, call Andra in as an ally, and then declare war on Vijayanaga. And because Andra is called into this war... They might not even be willing to join anyway. They are willing to join in a defensive war. Okay? So it's, it's not... It is actually a useful thing for me to do. Uh, so what this means is that because I'm currently in a war on the same side as them, they can't declare war on me. So what happens is, instead, the call to arms just gets completely ignored. 
until the point where it is actually a valid thing that they can do. And what that ends up meaning is that I can declare war, I can finish a war against Vigianagar, and then move on uh, to finish the war with Cochin after I've already pieced out with the uh, ally. And if you do that, you can attack someone that is an ally with your ally without actually um, having your ally break the, truce, uh, break the uh, alliance with you. It's very fun and more than slightly cheesy. Uh, so we are going to... Right, we wanted to... I'm going to wait a few months after we have done this as well, so... They have some unrest. I don't know why they don't have any separatists. Oh, they've they've accepted Tamil as a culture. Okay, so they have they're gonna have Telugu separatists, but they're not gonna have Tamils. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's so many troops gone. Oh, so good. Right. So they're now down to twenty five thousand troops. They have 11 mercs out, and they don't have any manpower. So half of their army is currently not replaceable. And they have it all in a gigantic doom stack. And they are actually not even going after the Bamani army right now. They're going to just sit here on a fort. So they're going to siege another fort. Oh, man. Oh, baby. Okay, give me that stability boost. We have purged the rebels off the register. Life is good. Uh, we're gonna wait a couple of months so that we can get the uh, things down further. Because once we get these guys out of here, they're, the unrest is gonna increase. And let's see here. Still sitting on about the same number of troops. That's weird that they have an increase to the number of troops, considering there's no way on earth that should be possible. This, this is, they're clearly, like, blatantly cheating. There's no way on earth that they're not losing troops right now. Uh, let's see here. So this is actually occupied by Vigianica, but this is occupied by Calcut. Okay, we are going to... AI has, uh, whatchamacallit, hacks confirmed. Only half of them are mercs, though. So, like, so if you if you look, I mean, fair. I guess the ratio of mercs to other things, but they're re they're reinforcing at half the rate. So they would have had to have lost a lot of mercs before that are currently reinforcing in, but they haven't been in any fights. So the mercs should be a re relatively small enough percentage of the casualties. So. Like, I, I don't think that that makes sense. If they lost 1% of their entire army, because their entire army is right here, 1% of their entire army is going to be a lot more than they're going to reinforce in just mercs in one month, I think. But I, I could be wrong. It just seems suspicious to me. Right, but if they lost it, if they were losing mercs, if they had a net negative number of mercs on the other fort, you would expect them to have a net negative number of mercs on this fort as well, right? If they had enough that they were actually losing, like, numbers in the stack itself, I mean, that would be pretty extreme. That's an extreme amount of attrition. But... I am certainly happy to see them sort of throwing their shit away. They do not have any more discipline than us. They do have more army tradition. But we have more morale, so. <laughs> How 
are you guys doing? It's about 3.5%. Their income is substantially reduced, but not by as much as we'd like. And we can't declare war on them directly yet. And unfortunately, Calicut is probably not going to be, like, wanting to peace out. But does it actually matter if we can just bring Andra into the war? Because we can dive this army here and blow them up fast. That's a pretty solid general. Do I want to go for this now, or do I want to go for it after I've seen them weaken a bit? They're only at 6%, so the war score difference isn't actually that high. And, oh, maybe this will do it, actually. They might stack wipe them here, and if they stack wipe them here... That might do it, because they now have zero troops. So if Calicut is unwilling to join the war because of their troop numbers, that's not quite it, no. That's not quite enough. Let's wait a little longer. Because if we can get them between when they set the troops and when they uh, actually finish building them, their, our, their army strength won't have increased, but their manpower will have reduced. So the Bamanis, ooh, disease outbreak, yes. Uh, you know that you're the bad guy when you're rooting for disease. <laughs> like, that's probably not a great sign. Oh, though I guess it doesn't even matter. Calicut now doesn't have an army, so I could actually carpet siege them before anything goes... Yeah, I think it's... I, they just lost their army. So since, the, since their army just got wiped, we can call Andra into the war. They will join. Calicut will join the war. I don't... Do I want to set you as a co-belligerent? Uh, I don't have any reason to set them as a co-belligerent because I don't actually have any claims. So I'm not going to set them as a co-belligerent even. I'm just going to declare this... And the purpose of this war is actually not to get into a war with Cochin. Cochin is just kind of a red herring. The purpose of this war is to basically get a nice war against uh, the other peeps. But we need to make sure that we get our fleet in. Oh, actually, we don't need to get our fleet in. Not yet, but we should, because we're going to be declaring another war immediately after. Okay, we're fine. Uh, are all of my fleets where they belong? Nope. Come home. Once y'all are home, we'll be all set. The, the one really major concern that I have, and this is a very, very major concern is, first of all, I do still have, like, a rank 4 military, so my troops are not exactly great. That is a 20 plus percent increase to their power plus the difference of probably at least, at least another plus 1 pip. So, not, you know, optimal by any stretch of the imagination. You still won't Andre will still join them. Oh, but Junard will join as well. Oh, their diplomatic reputation went back up. I wonder how that happened. So Junarg is this guy? Uh, nope. Who is Junarg? Do I, can I just click on their flag? Yes. Oh. It's a one province miner over here that I probably don't need to worry too much about.
I actually don't know that now is exactly the time. Just because they've been sitting on this for a long time, I want them to be in another siege before... Oh, I guess it doesn't matter, because I'm declaring war on you. Okay, I can declare war on Vigianaga later. For now, we're going to declare war on you. And obviously we don't want to be sitting on this war for too long. But... We can basically... Shock damage received minus 10%. That is a huge, huge bonus for this uh, phase of the game. And that is perfect. Uh, we have now locked that in. And we can... Okay, see, this is the issue, is that these guys now are moving on to that siege. And another siege, actually. So this is... Drylands? They have a fort here. Do I have the ability to take one of their forts before their entire army descends upon me? Maybe. I certainly do if these guys get their asses kicked by the Bahmanis because they sent a minor troop to do things that it cannot do. You keep a fleet in them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know that you can you, you can uh, put beeps in the uh, bangers. And knows all about that business. So Andra will do not join if I declare war now. The question is, do I want to go for taking all the cores back, or do I want the power? I guess I, there's not really a lot of reason to go for the power. Okay, we need one more tick. Yeah, I think we're going to want to do reconquest. And we'll try to take... Uh, does Calicut have an army anymore? I guess I should just check. Do we have any armies on the other side? They have lost 6,000 troops. They have zero retinues. So, since they have zero retinues, uh, just by putting this guy over here... Actually, I'm going to take three over here so that we can flank if they decide to build them. These guys are probably... I'm going to wait until this attack happens. It looks like they are going to land here. They're on the defensive, and they are doing very badly here because these guys have a general and they don't. They stack wiped them. They stack wiped the frickin' Bomani army. The Bomanis now have, or sorry, the Vigianagan army. Sorry, I'm used to being Vigianagan. I'm not used to them, you know, getting their asses kicked by the Bomanis. So that means they're gonna have to take out a shit ton of loans for this, and it also means that they have a current military about on par with ours. They already have the majority of their army that's actually around now is the Merc army. That was all of their regulars, which means that they now have to build an entirely new set of uh, Mercs and lost all of their regulars completely. They don't have a military that is permanent. Perfect. We are going for this. It's going to be fine. What could possibly go wrong uh, when going against multiple nations at the same time? I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm actually going to wait until I see if these two get into a fight. I don't want to change their strat. Ooh. It looks like Calicut actually pieced out. So I can piece out with Calicut. 
And then I just need to keep, keep like, one troop on top of Cochin. And I don't have to keep anyone else anywhere around here. So let's do that. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Peace you out. Uh, just get a white piece with you. Is that, the correct, is that the correct move? That is the correct move. Because then I don't even need to leave anyone here. Then Andra will do the entire war for me. So that's useful. And so we're going to peace out with Calicut. We don't have any war score against them, so we can't do anything uh, special. And yeah, they have uh, overextended themselves pretty considerably. Like, this is a major problem for them. They got themselves into a war against the uh, both the oh and they have particularists <laughs> and the particularists aren't near me so I don't have to worry about them attacking me so that's even better uh, we're going to go ahead and set our peeps to some. But for now, oh, Calicut will join them, so that was a mistake. Damn it. I, I needed to weaken them more. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we're going to take back the actual namesake. I think that's the simplest thing to do. And... Should be fine, right? Should be fine. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to set uh, these guys to siege. Which will hopefully get them to go where I want them to go. We are going to come over here, actually, and wipe out this army as it spawns. We're then going to hopefully be able to just piece them out immediately. Because they have no army, and we're going to have them completely carpet sieged again. It's basically the same situation that they were in before when they pieced out. The Bamanis are now fighting against them again. So as soon as I take this province, we're... <gasps> They're going to get sack wiped! Are they going to get sack wiped? They're not going to get sack wiped. Okay, it's taking too long. That was remarkably close, though. Okay, then. Ho, ho, ho. We now have a larger personal army uh, than the army of the largest nation <laughs> in India. So, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, obviously, they have the ability to recover very quickly. Don't get me wrong. We have to be very careful. That was the wrong army. But let's take a look here. We have... They have 10,000 troops total. And they have no manpower, so anything that they build is just going to be mercs. Unfortunately, I can't actually come over to attack these guys. And I cannot piece these guys out yet, I don't think. Nope. I maybe should have left a different stack in charge over there, but it's fine. Unfortunately, they did get one of their sieges back. But as we take control of more of their provinces, they're going to reduce in uh, income even further. So... I think we'll be able to handle this pretty effectively, actually. This is basically how it typically goes when I'm fighting against them as a uh, madre. This is, a, this is roughly a madre strat. Is I don't I don't ally with the Bamanis typically, or at least I don't typically fight them in a war as an ally of the Bamanis. 
that makes any sense. Whether I'm an ally of them or not, usually they're they're attacking the Bamanis, or the Bamanis are attacking them, and I am uh, jumping in on it. There's some sizable advantages to having the other fight actually be, um, like, an ally of yours who's in the same fight as you. There are advantages because at any moment, Vigiana can actually peace out suddenly with these other two nations. Um, especially because Misor probably has 20 war exhaustion at this point. Um, so... Particularly because the Bamanis are not the actual, like, war leader. That's a little scary. But hopefully we'll at least be able to finish this siege before that happens. And it looks like the Bamanis are... Oh no, they're fighting the Particularists. That's bad. That's very bad. Okay, so how is the army situation with you? You are now sitting on 3.5%. You have an income of 14! Oh, wow. That's like half of what they had before the war started. Uh, they still only have 10,000 troops. So it looks to me, based off of what I'm seeing here, like they have basically... Oh, no. That's a problem. I don't have... I don't have a solution to this problem. I can't get home because we the my vassal didn't take Vani before they came over. Okay, so we, we're now on a time limit. We can't be in this war for too long, because if we're in the war for too long, then uh, we lose, basically. Because they're going to take control of our capital. It looks like they are actually don't have any... Uh, Ability to reinforce their troops there, though, so... So that's good. I, these guys are heading our general direction, so... Hopefully, uh, we don't run into bunches of... Uh, rebels of theirs. I'm gonna... Oh! Whoa, that was scary. Okay, then. Uh, you know what? We're going to... It's safer to just stack. We're just going to stack. It's fine. Stack it up. So, we have a lot of negative war score just from the fact that they basically, like, uh, got ships surrounding every single province we own. We're going to lose a considerable amount to attrition here. Uh, and there's nothing I can safely do about that. So we're not going to do anything about that. Okay, we're going to give this over to Vassal. So let's see what happens with you. Yep. They have apparently decided that they have reached the maximum, like, sort of financial ruin that they are willing to go into for this war. So... Um. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, they're not at war with... Are you? No, they're not at war with them, so that's not going to help me. That would be useful, theoretically, but I'll do it anyway. Let's just... We're already allies with them. Go ahead and offer them military access. Please do not walk straight onto me with your stupid peasant army. I will be so upset if these guys walk straight on top of me. Da, 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 da. 
So we're at 100% war score here, but we are not piecing out because the alliance has not been canceled. It's not like they sent an alliance, a call to arms and it was denied. They are not capable of sending the call to arms in the first place. So we're now at 5% war score. It looks like Misor has just taken control of a huge chunk of territory. And that is pretty cool and exciting. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that gives us a lot of nice bonuses. <laughs> Okay, so Vigiana got, now does have a larger army than us in the totality of their army. That's a problem. They're going to carpet siege me. <laughs> so all of their forts are in hills, and I don't like that at all. <laughs> that makes me very sad. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get too, too much war score here conveniently. So, this is, a, this is a little troublesome. By a little troublesome, I mean this is a big problem, actually. The attacker here is peasant rebels, and they're at negative, they're at negative seven percent. So, if I can ask you, and I can, I can get military access, which does not allow me to bypass these forts. So it wouldn't actually matter. I still can't get to here from the south, even with military access. Oh, can I? I don't think so, no, because this is something that had military access, it's not controlled territory of mine. There's a distinction. And if I can get this siege one, which uh, is not gonna happen because this is gonna, uh, there's no way I can get here in time. To actually cancel that so bye so this is a serious problem because now we haven't gotten enough like war score in the early days of this war to accomplish our objectives I think I have to go in aggressively and try to take out their army. I think that's the only chance that I have of pulling this out. I have to actually beat their army. And I might be able to do it. Unfortunately, they're chilling in Highlands this whole time. What? What just happened? I should have actually pieced out with Calico when I had the chance. That was silly of me. No! Ugh. Shit. Uh, this is hills. I don't like this. Okay, I do like it now. I really like it now. Okay, we've got a pretty d decent general here. They are attacking into me, and I don't like that at all. Wait, why am I the attacker? I was here first. I'm not the attack. I'm not Vijayanaga. Okay. I'm very confused right now. Don't mind me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this person in charge because that will help us win this fight, potentially. If we don't win this fight, we just lost the war. And that means that we lost the playthrough, basically. Oh, yeah, that's a problem. Yep, that's uh, GG right there. Unless they go completely bankrupt, uh, we have basically just lost the war. Maybe not, though. I mean, we can recover a portion of these guys, anyway. I, I kind of went all in on this strat, and it has not panned out the way that I would like it to. These guys are going the wrong direction. Can I get here first? Jungle. Uh, we're not going to do this, right? Oh, we will. By one day. 
It's not a great fight. Oh, they're going a different place. I'm an idiot. Alright, so they are the attackers, but it is grassland, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, I'm going to wait to uh, pick all of these troops in, and then I'm going to consolidate my regiments. <sighs> Unfortunately, I, I should have set these guys to uh, sync up, actually. That was a silly idea of mine. I put these guys on siege because of a variety of reasons in the start of the fight, but it was silly to keep them on siege that whole time. I immediately should have recognized that that was a problem. I am losing this badly, actually. I don't know what was going on there, but I felt like I should have been doing better than I did just there. On the plus side, I can apparently retreat all the way to Andre, which Let's me do absolutely nothing. Okay then, well I guess that's it. We overstepped and the war here ended uh, earlier than we needed it to. We, we might be able, because we already control one of these forts, we might be able to just take another fort, but the problem is that they're going to take this fort first. They've got control of the, the ocean, which means that they've got control of this whole thing. I wasn't accumulating war score as quickly as I was expecting to, actually. So let's take a look at how this has gone for them. So they currently have 17 mercenaries. I might be able to pull this back around if they have gone far enough into debt. But I have a suspicion that they haven't actually gone very far into debt for this. I don't think that they've actually had that big of a problem. I don't think I can just peace out. Yeah, I can't just peace out right now. I might be able to if I sit on this and take this completely, but probably not because the problem is that this is going to, uh, they're going to take these and they're, their war score is going to get insurmountably high. So I don't think, I don't think there's a strat that's going to pull this, pull a win out here. Uh, I'm actually going to set them back to siege again. Because, I think that'll be useful. Well, they started, before the war started, they were already, like, I think 600 Ducats in debt. So, like, they should probably be at least, like, 1,000 Ducats in debt or something like that. If they're not at least 1,000 Ducats in debt, then that, I would be very sad. I would feel very robbed if they basically lost their whole army and half of their country and it didn't really bug them very much but one of these is going to tick before i can get a white piece if i can get a white piece out of this i'm actually fine taking a white piece but i'm not going to get a white piece unless they uh they fail on these sieges for the next probably three years And that's not a very strong exaggeration. There's a little bit of exaggeration there, but not very much. If I had pieced out with Calicut, that might have actually changed things a bit. But piecing out with Calicut would have meant that I didn't have access to the uh, thing anymore. I wouldn't be able to get any war score off of them. And that would have been troublesome. Yeah. They're not they're not actually scaling up very much cuz now that they are no longer at war with the other people, they only have a couple of provinces with very high autonomy that are doing the stuff. I cannot believe this still hasn't ticked. Neither one of these is ticked yet. They're getting such trash luck on these rolls. 
Okay, we just lost the Siege of Cote, and that means that we are now at negative 79% war score. There's no way on earth that we're going to pull this out at this point. So we are actually going to have to end this run. So <clears throat> it looks like the... Um, The first war uh, is very impactful here. I'm actually going to uh, check something because I want to see if I offer them all this as tribute. Okay, well, what don't you want? Uh, what happens if I just surrender? You know, I'm just going to send her send a note notification of unconditional surrender. Okay, so control all provinces currently owned and controlled by us. Weird. I don't think I want that. Uh, let's see here. So I guess we'll have to just send them a peace offer that they want. So what does that mean? We have... Ooh, you know I could offer them that I become... I could just offer to become their vassal. That would be kind of funny. So it looks like they don't want this. So they want war reps, that's fine. And what else do you want? I don't think I can actually get See, this is the problem with the AI, honestly. I'm literally offering them everything that they want, and they are refusing to take it. <laughs> they have nothing else that they want, so I'm just going to unconditionally surrender, and we'll call it a day. So we do still exist. The reason that I wanted to do that is because I want to see how far in debt they are. And they're currently allied with Calicut, so... If we declare war on them, they are only 1328 in debt. Now, 1328 in debt is quite a lot, but it's actually substantially lower than I was actually expecting it to be. So, that's very unfortunate. All right, well, that's going to be uh, it for this run, I guess. So, I guess I'll just have to work on the other stuff now. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end this stream here uh, because I have other stuff uh, to do. I'm not going to just restart this run. I'll restart the run probably uh, either tomorrow or the next day or something like that. Um, so I'll, I'll restart this, try to come up with a slightly better opening. Uh, the, the issue is... I think there's several issues with the strategy that I implemented there. Um, but one of the things that I think I'm going to do next time is I think I'm not going to increase the size of my nation at all until later. So I might give some provinces to Madre, but I probably will not. I'll probably just sit here and hope that someone gets big enough by just conquering each other over here to uh, accomplish my, one of my objectives. If I get a fabrication on Madre, then... Actually... I think that the war against Madre was appropriate, and I did exactly what I needed to do, which was take the province and then release it as a vassal. They are loyal. They don't have any ill will toward me if I do that. So doing that, I think, is going to work. So taking Madre makes sense. But I don't think that taking over these other provinces made any sense tactically, because it ended up giving me a huge amount of penalties to uh, stability cost modifier and stuff like that. It obviously didn't help that I went through like three rulers over the span of 30 years. Um, you know, that's 
suboptimal, but and they were all trash rulers as well, but that's beside the point. That's just what I have to live with. Um, but yeah, I think I think that this there is a there is a good opening here. I just need to find it. I just need to figure out what the actual opening that I'm going to go with is. Because I don't think that this was remotely similar to the opening that I should have done. I think that what this opening is, is basically the Madre opening. Only, first I have to conquer Madre to get it. I need to do, fabricate the claim on Madre, conquer them... Once I've conquered them, you wait for the opening with Vigianagar, and you immediately just go after them. Uh, and, yeah, so that's it. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. So thank you for watching. It has been a pleasure to stream for you today. And I hope to see you all again next time, when I will hopefully be a little bit more successful. But if I'm not, then we get murdered a lot, and that's fun too. Dying horribly is fine, as long as you're not doing it in the first ten minutes. So we spend more time looking at load screens than we spend playing the game, which is basically how my Byzantium playthroughs were up until I got the strat down. Anyway.